Good afternoon and welcome to episode 776 and this one's going to be a doozy. <laughs> uh, the title of today's topic is Men are Screwed and I was being polite, it's going to say something worse. Um, why are we screwed and what we can do about it and what we can do to fix it. So I'm going to talk into a, a rather um, untalked about topic but I'll get to that in a moment before I do that. Let me choose myself to so know who I am and why I'm talking about this and go from there. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. I am the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. Hi, Sarah. Nice seeing you my broadcast. Seems such a long time since I've seen you last. Um, <laughs> I'm also an inspirational speaker and a relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which inf inspires and fuels my work and what started these talks over two years ago now called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. I say over two years ago because now we're episode 776, as I mentioned, and the topic today is men are screwed. I was going to say men are effed up, but I thought it'd be a little bit more polite. And so the topic today is really about some archetypes, some stereotypes, and some really bad types, and uh, what we can do about changing that. So first of all, um, in case you hadn't realized, I'm a guy. So I'm speaking from experience as well as being an observer of the behavior. And one thing to start with is going to be distressing to some is I'm going to speak about a particular subset of men in particular and then broaden it after that. So the first thing I'm going to address is the straight white Christian male. Straight white Christian male. And I'd say American probably more than anything else. Other countries apply it too. It certainly happens in England as well. Um, probably parts of Europe as well. So I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna say Western, I'm gonna say that. So straight, white, Christian, Western, male. Five letters, five, five key, uh, words. And why I'm specifically targeting that type of person is because that's the one part of our population that thinks everything's fine. There's no um, sense of self doubt, self reflection, generally speaking. Sorry, let me qualify. These are generalizations because there are certainly individuals in that group subset of population I mentioned who may have other issues like they're too short or too fat or other things that are going on for them. But generally speaking, the straight, white, Christian, Western male, it's a long title, is the most perfect in their own eyes. And this is the fallacy and the challenge, is that men who are not reviewing their own selves, who are not um, looking through the lens of self-investigation, are generally ignorant of the truth. You see, everybody else in the population who's not the straight, white, Christian, Western male, <laughs> again, again, there's ring, uh, nice rhythm with that. Everybody else who's not that, and I, I count myself as not that either because I'm Jewish, I was from Jewish background, not Christian, that's why I say Christian particularly, is everybody else who's not that has had at times some um, light shone upon them to indicate that they were less than or not the same as. For myself, and I've shared this before, I was bullied through high school because I was Jewish amongst all of uh, Church of England Protestant kids. And I was an outsider. And it was actually that, that because of that, probably more than anything else, that was underneath the surface that drove me to pursue finding out more about life, love, and everything else. I mean, the way I do this work, I can look back and see a direct thread to what started that, which was that one of those, that was one of the, instance, one of the instances that started it. Other things did too. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Sarah. So adversity challenges us to dig around a little, reflect and grow. Yes, adversity. And that's the thing. I say that's very true. It's a pretty good word, actually. Thank you for that. I'm going to steal that word. Adversity. See, the straight, white, Christian, Western male rarely deals with adversity. They're always on top of the hill, on top of the heap, top of the hill, doing better than other people, being the most visible. Now, I'm going to speak to a couple of things about that. There's a, there's a dire consequence of that that happens as well. But definitely those who aren't that, so women, minorities, uh, LGBTQ, LGBTQ and everybody else have felt that they were probably less than or not as good as and have done, have ideally, not everybody, have ideally done some self-investigation to reflect, grow and learn, as you said. The problem with the perfection of the straight white Western Christian male, just keep him on my toes there, is that challenge, and uh, what's the right word, not challenges, but behavior out pictures in negative ways when things don't go right, put it that way. For example, the percentage of suicides among straight white Western Christian male is higher than other populations, I believe. The number of um, massacre type behaviors that happen where men that go out and 
kill tons of other people are generally speaking, particularly in the Western world, straight white Western Christian males. So I see a th thread here or a theme here. That part of the population, and I don't count myself amongst it because I had the advantage or the disadvantage of being raised Jewish. So I was on the outside of it and had, and had to do my own work and have done my own work for the last 35 years. That part of the population hasn't done any work on itself, hasn't looked at itself, hasn't reflected on its, its own beingness and has never faced any real challenges. And you ladies go out and date them and you wonder why things don't work out too well. This is the thing that is challenging is that for women I know, and, and as I speak to women, coach women a lot, I'm aware of how much they are challenged by men who don't do the work, who don't um, show any humility, who don't meet them where they are, and all the other don'ts, I could list quite a few of those. The challenge that women are facing is that there aren't many men out there, unfortunately, amongst that group, who are actually students of life, learning to be better people, who, do, who pursue the personal growth journey, um, who, who are spiritually biased, who, well, because I think that's the thing. Spiritually based people who may have been Christian have stepped out of that. That's why, again, I'm talking about the straight, white, Christian, Western male, because that Christian piece is important too. And I, and I guess I would include Catholicism and other, other faiths in there too, because that um, majority within the minority holds true that it's okay, there's nothing wrong with it. If you just, just follow the good book and do all certain things, you'll get to heaven, no, no problem. And the thing about it is that's a fallacy. Oh my God, I just talked about the Bible being a fallacy. Oh dear, okay, well, I'll get back to that. <laughs> I've talked about that before in much greater detail, but I'm not gonna cover it here. I don't think it will anyway. So that, again, the challenge is that this part of the population is going along like almost like Pollyanna in a sense. Like everything's fine, everything's okay, nothing, no problems to face, I'm gonna be okay. And the dance of that is that they don't tend to interact with other people at equal levels. This is one of the challenges of this because that part of the population, when they're in a relationship with women, because again, most women have faced their own challenges, opportunities, adversities, and have grown through them. The men haven't done anything at all. I mean, I, I, said, I, was, talking, I was talking to my friend um, Sarah today when I was at, having a conversation with her about how in the personal growth industry, which I spent, you know, I've been in the seminars since the mid eighties because of my own challenges I had growing up because I wasn't part of the Christian part of it. I was the Jewish part of it. But the thing is, is that I also was aware one of the secret benefits of being amongst the personal growth industry was there were way more women doing it than there were men. Actually way more women and gay men than there were straight men. The straight men in that population were in the minority. And I would say the straight, white, Christian, Western male was even smaller part of that population of the people who were in the seminars, workshops, retreats, trainings about human development. So they never learned. And very few men, I mean, I, I've been in seminars with lots of men over the years, but we, those of us who've done this work, are a very small minority amongst the general population of straight, white, Western Christian men. I have to keep doing that to remember my, that's my metronome for the five, five words. So. The challenge is that these men haven't done any work. Of course, the answer is do the work. Not quite so easy. See, the thing about it is that a lot of men out there, as I said, in this population are the highest, population, highest percentage of suicides and of abusive behavior of others, massacre, you know, um, running, running off with guns in, in churches and, and temples and synagogues and, and, and etc. And I strongly suspect it's because these men have never had any sort of crisis that brought them to have a crisis of faith, a crisis of self, a crisis of evolution. I don't know population-wise, but I suspect it's still true as well, that that same small population is actually the majority amongst the 12-step programs. And I could be wrong on that. I don't have data on some, so this is my theory I'm putting out, by the way, so just bear in mind, this may not be accurately, absolutely 100% true. But see, the thing is that when it's a person, I'm just taking an individual as an example, a person who has never had any challenges, opportunities to grow, faced any demons, had any, had any diversities or negative experiences, they're just going along whistling like everything's fine. Again, Pollyanna behavior. And when something does happen, because generally life throws us curveballs, where there's a challenge thrown at them, they tend to do one of two things. They'll either become reactive to it or they'll start asking what happened. And when they react to it, that's when suicide, 12 step or addictions that leads to 12 step or abusive behavior of others happens. This is unfortunately the challenge that I think that, that we're facing is that we have 
I mean, it's being outpictured massively in DC. Let me be just let me just throw this out there because of the pollute. And, and this is not okay. Let me say this this way. I am I am a centrist to left leaning, just so you know my political views. But I'm watching behavior by those in power right now, which is generally yes, the the the, the red side of the fence. They're exemplifying how the straight white Christian Western male, who's older as well is really running some effed up behavior. And it's unfortunately, the price is being paid by other people. The people who were victimized, the general public, the political elite, the, the sorry, the um, political adversaries, the, um, the future of this country even. So this behavior exacerbates itself in that arena as well. So it's not just your local neighborhood or your ex-boyfriend ladies, it's everywhere. So the thing is, what we can do about it is, I would say it's two things. One of them is being aware of the fact this is what's going on. First of all, it's a big step in the right direction. But secondly, is to be willing to help those that fall. Hi, Karen. I see you rock. That's what you say. You've, you've seen so many examples of people, mostly white men, freaking out when faced when even a little bit of adversity. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yes. That's a part of it, too. Is they because they because these this particular population because they haven't done any work haven't faced their own demons haven't gone through any challenges have no tools or even capacity to handle adversity when it's even a small bit like you said so you're right about that true I'm grateful in the sense that I've been through my own my own challenges in my own journey that made me more accommodating of that experience that's why that's why so many women I have such great I'm in such great awe and respect of women who've been through some hellacious challenges whether it was abuse or rape or incest or other things. I'm so um, in awe of women who've been through that because I see you get so strong and so powerful in that. Hi, Sarah. We say you. So you, you're giving. I'm giving you a newfound. Whoops. See what you said there. Giving you a newfound appreciation for the adversity you've faced in your life, for it has led you down a path of, of seeking, wrestling, surrendering, and essentially going deeper and growing. And then I'll keep this in mind as a parent, as a single mom. And we'll keep doing your best to keep stay calm as you face your son face adversity. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, Sarah. And I'll say one more thing, by, by the way, for that particularly, is um, raise your son with awareness. As in, you be aware, but also have him be aware. Show him books and teachings, like the book we talked about earlier today, about the, um, the way of the superior man. When he's, when he's in his mid-teens, not before then probably, but give him a book and then read that. Have him consult, have, go, have him do some workshops, trainings, retreats, um, maybe do adventure, do, you know, do outward bound stuff. Do things that will sh will stretch him out of his comfort zone to have him face the truth that he's much better than he thought he was. And yes, Cameron. Yes, the diversity of making us stronger. It is unfortunately the case that we basically do get stronger as um, um, Rachel. Yes, Rachel Naomi Remen wrote in Kitchen Table Wisdom, a book I read a long time ago. She talks about how that we become stronger at the broken places. So yes, adversity does make us stronger. In fact, there's. Um, what is it? In? It's the Japanese art of kin kinsakura, I think it's called. There's two names for it. That basically, when you take, when you take, you're welcome, Sarah. And I can, if you're on any support, let me know. I can offer some other ideas as well. Um, in the Japanese history, when vases or bowls got were broken, they were sometimes repaired with cracks in them because they didn't have enough pieces to put them together, and they would pour go liquid gold in them to seal them up, and so they'd be more beautiful after they broke than before they broke. So it's the same analogy about broken and stronger. So it's stronger at the broken places, which is again, is Rachel and Naomi yeah, filling the cracks with gold. Yes, there you go, Karen, you know what I mean. So again, what Rachel and Naomi Remen said in her book was about being stronger at the broken places. And she talks about that because she worked in a, um, uh, what do you call it? Not, a, not a convalescent home, but a, a healing re retreat for cancer survivors. And the story she talks about in the book are amazing. I, I, I watched a video of hers from years and years ago. How she was about her clients who got stronger through their adversities and challenges. You know, this guy who lost a leg in a motorcycle accident, he went through his own dark night of the soul, but came out the other side as an encourager and co and a counselor for the other people who went in through had amputations. We ha we all have our own challenge. No, I say no. I'm really careful. I say this. Many of us have lots of challenges that we can either overcome and use to advantage, or we can fall victim of. And for those. That minority again of the straight white Christian Western male, maybe they haven't faced him yet. For my brothers in that I know who've done this work, whatever color or skin or religious teaching you have, 
I know you're part of the same, same conversation with me, that this is not something, I'm, a, I'm the only one doing this, a lot of us are, but there's a vast number of men out there who don't have a clue, unfortunately, there's more to life than what they've been living with. So part of that shift is to raise awareness, to raise the conversation, to raise the opportunity to bring a better, um, I'm gonna say life, but a better way of being to people's lives. Now, I'm realizing I didn't ask the question what we can do about it, because the thing is, I don't have to have an answer in this talk at the moment of how to fix the problem of this straight white Christian Western male who doesn't think there's anything wrong. Because if you show them something wrong, you don't know what's gonna happen, how they're gonna react or respond. Ladies, if you date men like that, be aware of the fact you may be going to a place where you're dealing with a man who's living in a, in a <laughs> it's really simple about it, a delusional state, because it is delusional to a degree, to think everybody's perfect or think they're better than everybody else or whatever that is. Those self, or should say those societal rules that have basically made that part of the patriarchal structure so elitist is coming to an end. So there is going to be a change coming. There's definitely coming with so much happening as well. Karen, you said you believe the divine feminine will soon be holding space for the rising of the divine masculine. I am absolutely on board with that. I'm in worship, as I said before, and a champion for the divine feminine, and I hold for the rise of the divine masculine. That's the work I've been doing myself. So, Karen, I'm absolutely on the same page as you, so thank you for that. So, that's part of the shift, yes. That's the other part, too. That, again, straight, white, Christian, Western male has been living in its living, generally speaking, in the ego, not in the masculine. The macho, not the masculine the selfish versus the selfless and the change is coming for all of us some are waking up slowly some are waking up by grace some are waking up by trauma by challenge by adversity eventually they're all going to wake up how that's going to happen i don't yet know yet and i know for example here's one of the things i was thinking about and i was using um the resident of the white house as an example is a part of that um challenge of that part of the population the straight white western christian male is they never say or never admit that they're wrong they all were they're always right in their book and that's one of the challenges of that is this part of the population because again they've not been challenged or had to deal with adversities like everybody else in the world think that they're right all the time so when you meet somebody of that con culture who doesn't actually know how to admit fault uh, being wrong or incorrect or making a mistake or hurting somebody the best chance maybe to walk away is to take care of yourself there are plenty of men out there now who have done their work, who are doing their work, who are growing to the divine masculine, as, as Karen put it, who are learning how to be more responsible contributor, contributors to society. However, there's still quite a few people who haven't, quite a few men especially. There are women who also got their own issues, but that's not what this talk's about. So let me be clear, this talk is about this particular subset of the population. There's a whole lot of challenges for women out there who haven't done the work either, who've gone through their own challenges but haven't grown from them. That I may talk about another time. But I wanted to speak about this now because it's been on my radar for a while. And with conversations I had over the weekend and another one today, thank you, Sarah, it was like, let me talk about it now. So that's what I want to make, bring you to awareness about that part of the population. I don't have the answers all, for all of this. I do have some awarenesses of this. So this talk is really more uh, an awareness conversation and, an, and a provoking of dialogue. So this, I hope, will start a conversation. I don't have, again, I don't have the answers for this. But if this resonates, if you have questions, you have thoughts, please let me know. I'd love to talk about this more. Um, all my offerings that I offer, my book, my coaching, my self-love practice, my coming home self, that's all for women. The reason why I offer it to women is because women are willing to take it on. And I'm not going to put any links in today because it's not about that today. But if you want to reach out for that information, that sort of stuff, please message me. But I really want to say, this is a start of a conversation that can, can go a lot deeper. I, don't, I can't give an answer to the whole population challenges for that part of the straight white Christian male excuse me, straight white Christian Western male in a 20 minute talk. But I can suddenly start the conversation here. So that's what I'm doing here. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me and all your interactions. Again, please continue the dialogue below. I respond and talk and interact with you after I sign off. Um, this one's an interesting topic to talk about. I don't know what I'll be talking about tomorrow. It may be more, I don't know. We'll see what happens later on today. But I do want to thank you for participating, for watching and for being in my broadcast. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, and also, and much easier to search on, is my YouTube channel. Um, YouTube, my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, where all of these live from newest to oldest. You can search through all the way through. So I, thank you, Karen. We haven't caught up for a while. We should probably talk one of these days and catch up. be fun. Um, 
and you're very welcome. And um, yeah, so you can search through my YouTube library much more easily than Facebook uh, Facebook business page, although that works too. So with that, thank you for watching. Please check out my other broadcasts and find something that may be valid to you. If you have any questions, thoughts about this topic, or if you want to get any help in the area of love and relationships, please reach out to me. And uh, with that, I will sign off. I appreciate you watching. Thank you for being with me. I will see you again tomorrow, I presume. And take care of yourself. See you soon. Bye.